but we got a lot of things and pieces to put together to kind of talk about who and what we are and how we walk and talk and how we go about it. Each one of us, from our staff to the support staff to the people that run this building to our team, to our manager on the team, to our best player, all those are pieces of the puzzle. And the pieces are gonna build onto each other. And, and that's kind of what we're starting to talk about here for this little phase of time together. I want you to start to think about really what we're looking for is how do we understand where we are now and where do we want to get. Like future and our goals, like what we wanted to accomplish as a team. So it was really exciting because I'm very much a goal-oriented person. So to hear what we wanted to accomplish and how we were going to get there is really cool to me and taking the steps we need to take to get there. They all get it. They want to be they want this program to grow and develop, and that's special. We talk about standards, rules, tenets, things that are the principles that we kind of want to hold ourselves accountable to. So we got to make sure that you've heard these. We put together a set of, you know, some people call it rules and we call it standards. These are the standards that we hold each other by. And, you know, one of the basic kind of to keep it simple in a way, but yet it's broad. Take care of yourself. You know, the most important thing is that we want you to know you got to take care of yourself first and then take care of your teammates and then take care of the program. And you know, for me that kind of comes out of, you know, if you love thy neighbor as thyself, you gotta love thyself. First and foremost, before you can love someone else. And so that's kind of take care of yourself. And, and that's kind of our, our number one principle. And, and then take care of the people around you. And that, that can mean a lot of things. And then taking care of this program. How do you, uh, we're all ambassadors for athletics. We're all ambassadors for women's volleyball. And how do you, care yourself and take care of this program. I think that's three of the most important things to have a successful program to be a nationally ranked program that I know he wants to accomplish here at Tech and taking care of yourself is the most important because you can only truly rely on yourself and uh, whenever you do take care of yourself that's taking care of your team because you're part of a team you're part of something bigger than just yourself and then of course your program is to come in every day and have that pride and that respect for Texas Tech and wanting to do well, wanting to show the nation what we're about. And I think it's really important that we understand how important the subconscious is in volleyball. I'm a big believer that our words become our actions. You know, I, from a personal philosophy, from a psychological standpoint, from stuff I've read, and uh, you know, something I'm a big fan of the game of golf. And uh, we know that you know, there's a short snippet of time that it's a physical game, but it's a lot of time that's between our ears. How are you telling yourself, hey, I was this or I was that, and is that a positive thing? So if you're constantly fighting those thoughts and you're feeding it with positivity, it really does make a huge difference. So I've seen it firsthand. It's, it really does make a difference. Now, can we be great mentally and can we be great physically? But that type of thing is, that's one little piece. We all like to do things at a high level or we wouldn't be playing this sport. And the more we do it right, the more times we do it, the better we get, the better we're going to, you know, and, and that just grows. And that's when... You know, that, that it just it builds. What do we want to do and what do we want to accomplish? And I'm a true, true believer in our words become our actions. What we're looking for is we wanted to build a bridge. And what does it mean to build a bridge? And, and what does it take to be a part of the bridge? And right now we're doing the first part. We've got to start building the bridge. And so we asked our athletes, what are you going to bring to the table? What are you going to bring to this bridge? And uh, the bridge is building a, a program that reaches over to a new elite program. We want to be an elite national program. And I want you to write some ideas of what piece of the bridge, what component of a bridge. Think about a bridge. What does a bridge take to be, and you guys get into your head, what does it take to build a bridge? That right there just kind of makes you 
feel like you're part of something great. Really feel like you're a piece of that puzzle that's gonna be something so much greater than what you can even imagine. But I want you to think about what part are you gonna play, you individually, and I want it to be, you know, as we talked about with our spring goals, it's not just passing. I'm gonna be a great passer. Be, bring it home. Just the fact that it kind of makes you have something to strive for that's not 20 kills or be the best player. It's a little more personal. We got to kind of, we got to talk to him about what we wanted our roles to be. What are you gonna do to help us build a bridge to become Big 12 champions? And if we become Big 12 champions, the rest is in front of us. What these athletes were willing to offer to each other it was moving. It's powerful to feel that and to know, look, she cares enough to say, I want to be this and I want to be that and I'll do this to help her and, and I'll help this program be uh, bigger than, than all of us. And that's what we started talking about. That's probably the biggest theme that's come out is, you know, this program, we want it to be bigger than all of us. It's not just one piece. It's not just the coaches or the players. It's all of us. Two thousand eleven, baby. Let's get it on. All right, up top. Here we go. Here we go. Rack them. One, two, three. Rack them. Eight, seven. We should be going. Six, five, four. We should be going. Uh, it's fast. One of the terms we like to use is fast and furious. You know, it's we're getting in, getting out. We're not going to be in here long and slow. I, I've been in practices where, you know, it's good work, but it's slow. I'd rather get in and less is more. So we're turning, planting that right foot. Good. That, go again real quick. Watch her footwork. Right? She did that great. As she's running, a little shovel, put that right foot down. She slows down, right foot and spin on it. It's focusing on a certain component. We can't teach everything all at once. So let's get better at this area and then let's change. Let's get better at this area and then those areas all come together. Good. Watch the other person's feet. Do you watch the next person's feet? And every day we're working on the fundamentals. Uh, Don always talks about doing the little things correctly. Like we're going to do the basics better than other teams, and that's why we're going to win. That's better, much better. Good feet. You can be as fancy as you want, but if you can't do the basic things, you're not going to ever be successful. And so just the fact that we sit and focus on that, and that just makes it automatic. Yeah, that was a big stride. I'd rather see a little shuffle. We like to talk about the mechanics and movements. What do our feet do and what does our body do? And so when we put the learning and the visual part with the mechanics the right way, it's, that's when real learning happens. Hands down, hands correct, Nicole, bring them down, get them set. That's better. Every time, Nicole. So if we can get better with every touch and every play and every day, you know, then it truly happens. That's when that, that combustion internally, like it, it just, you can see the joy in you know, their eyes. They, they light up and they go, aha, this is how I learn. And once they begin to teach themselves how to learn, and they begin the learning really then, you know, blossoms. When you extend and pose, that it looks the same, okay? You're on that. You know they've got it. And they start to say stuff like, I'll look at somebody, I'll start to look and they go, look, I was, and they start to say what I was gonna say, then they're self-teaching. And once they begin to self-teach, you know, now. it's unlimited okay. learning. Okay, get close to the net. Here we go. You felt it, that was good. Self-teaching, good. You know, because they understand what the mechanics are, they understand what the movements are, they understand what they need to do to have the right outcome, so they understand the process. And uh, if they understand the process and how to self-teach, they can become great. Okay, good, oh my God. Good job. It's okay, okay. I want to instill the joy and the love of how to learn and how to learn volleyball. You know, like that's what I know how to teach at the highest levels. And uh, I think that's when you know as a coach you've, you've built, uh, you've given them something, the joy, the passion to learn, the joy to learn, and how to go about learning. Smile, Sierra, you're in the gym. Don always is telling us, smile, spread the joy, um, have fun with it. And I think that helps you play better. Good, Mikea. Much better, buddy. It's looking better already. Good job. He's a big time cheerleader. I mean, he's got so much energy, and I, I really love him for that because I, I'm a good teacher myself, but we complement each other with Beth and Amy and the rest of the staff. And, uh, you know, part, part of learning is being able to teach, uh, but give the correct feedback. The better opportunity to be clean. 
Okay. You got it. He is very nurturing and very encouraging in the fact of he knows that our girls know what they're supposed to be doing, and he's going to help them get there by doing it in a positive way, um, by getting them to a point where they feel like they're the best player that they could possibly be. I mean, he's never going to stop coaching them. Excellent. That's a really good answer to that question. Good. good. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. In practice, we are allowed to give feedback. If we really want to work on something, he'll make sure we work on that. And after practice, we get to kind of have conversation about what we liked about practice, what we thought we did well. And then it gets everyone involved. It was a good live swing. OK. What were some of the struggles? Serving. Serving? OK, good. So. What are we going to do when we come out of this break? It's more of a group effort, and it just makes you more willing to play because you feel like you have a part of what's going on. Jojit's very methodical. You know, Jojit's, uh, he's a thinking, uh, thinking man's man. He, he's uh, a professional. Um, he's thorough. Um, He's a very good teacher of um, movements. You know, we, lot, we talk a lot about our movement patterns, our habits, and he's very good at breaking down the habits and our movement patterns so that we do the right thing, the repetitions the right way. There you go, good job. Nice job, nice job there. Hey, we get this, it gets set back that way. I'm an X's and O's kind of guy, and I love doing scanner reports, but I also love teaching, and that's one of the main things that brought me here to uh, Texas Tech. Uh, one was working with one of my best friends, Don Flora, and two, being able to do the two things I, I love doing. I love strategizing. Don and I know this is a chess game, and uh, when you're in the Big 12, you have, you have some great pieces to move around that board, and we have, we, have the, we have the athletes to do that. And also just being able to teach. Nice roll shot. You see how you went hard, then you went, okay. Fast approach, slowed it down on top, that was good. It's that chess match and being able to uh, sh show the kids, model it for the kids, and have them try it out, especially in practice, but when you see the results in a game, it, they have that epiphany, like, oh, this works. Like, he'll come up to you one-on-one, -on -one, like, say, drill's over with, and talk over with you what you could have done better, talk about the different techniques, like hand placement on the ball, or, you know, your platform, or, you know, blocking where your hands should be and you know it's just like it's little things but little things that make a big difference hey i like i really like that that was good just press over that was good move and i mean it's a remarkable thing and for us we celebrate it all the time when our kids are doing things great uh whether if it's the smallest thing to the biggest thing you got that it's a weak approach right you see or you, you cut there okay okay, okay. come on and he sees everything like he will all of a sudden be next to you and being like, on that last ball, make sure you're doing this or doing this. And you didn't even know he was paying attention to you. Yeah, there's Miera right there. Yeah, you got to you get you stuck in there. You can't. That's their best attacker right there, okay? Come on. I think his one-on-one -on -one communication, Jody, it's really good at taking someone and looking them eye to eye and going toe to toe and saying, this is how we're going to get you better today and I'm going to work with you. We're going to work together. Uh, so that's a that's a it's a great trait, you know, one that the elite coaches on. He's an elite Still coach. Still closed, and the next time you go, hey, you got to bring that block in, because as long as you close, we can defend you here. But if you leave a seam, we got to defend you here and defend you in the seam. Okay. And Joe's always right there, just wanting to help you. After practice, he might pull you aside and be like, hey, let's really work on this or this tomorrow, make sure we do this instead. Or he'll even take you aside and hit, hit some more balls at you to kind of help you. He's always willing to do extra work with you. Extend the rally and let's play some defense, okay? When you're in system, you should be hitting your goal, right? We're so blessed to have him in this program. And, um, you know, he's, he's very good at, at making that passionate, direct, um, very uh, depth filled. He's, he's, he's a deep guy and they get it. and. Uh, he can teach at a high level. Bree, you still got to jump with the setter. You got to jump. She jumps at that, and you're here. Mier is jumping with the middle, and like that setter is going. You got to do. You got to get on the setter. Okay. He understands how to communicate at a very personal level, and uh, so he's a fantastic teacher. He's a he's a really good clinician and teacher uh, of the game of volleyball, and his his emotional and uh, his presence in this program has been. Um, 
an immense component of how we've grown so quickly. It's the same spacing, it's not. Okay, cool. Reach, reach. Good. She's up. Right here. Shot, shot, shot. Good. Weak and strong. Weak and strong, Megan, okay? Every time. She loves this game, and uh, she helps that part of it, the joy, keeping the joy in the gym. And then she's very technical about uh, learning how to teach with our teaching cues, and so she's been become very technical at the small things, and um, I give her a lot of credit in the teaching side that she's picked up well on on uh, how to go about teaching and when to push and when to pull. Right, right uh, but then she's got this, that joy. She loves being in the gym. She loves building the relationships. She loves showing the athletes that, hey, if you keep working at that, how good you're gonna get. Good, Megan, good. Now cover, Megan, come on. Nice. She's played at the highest level, so she can really talk about the highest levels of playing the game from Division I volleyball to professional volleyball. Um, her passion for the game just wells out of her. It just exudes in everything she does. Good, Carlin. Good. Same thing, Bev passes off, okay? My freshman through junior year, she was the scouting team's biggest hitter against us. And she always beat us. So just the, when she tells you something, you know she knows what she's talking about. You're squaring her up and you're looking right at her like this. You've gotta be here, okay? When I played, I wanted someone to always be behind me and always teach me right from wrong. And if I was doing something wrong, to tell me that, but tell me in a positive manner where I could, you know, where I could learn. And Megan, where do you go? You were coming back, okay? I mean, Dowdy didn't say it, but as soon as you see her leave, you've got to take that spot, okay? I want to be that person when a girl comes off and maybe she didn't have the best play, I want to be right behind her the whole time, lifting her up and making sure that she knows that she's a, the best player out there, the best outside, best middle, whatever it is and make her a better player that way. Hey, make sure you're in the right spot, Down. Make sure you're in the right spot. Ball side, there you go, look at you go. Position-wise, she's my position, or she played my position in college, so I can relate to her a lot in that way, and she can really help me out in that way. And then just off the court, she's just a great person. Fun to be around and a great coach. Get back in, Dowdy, get back in, come on. We love her input, and another thing that she's great with is recruiting and being personable, and the relationships she creates and has ma maintained with our current players and former players and future players. I think that's a huge asset to us, her coaching and her, and her personal relationships with players. Good, touch. Beth is the reason I'm at Texas Tech. She recruited me and she is one of my favorite people in the entire world. Cool. <laughs> Before they even step foot on campus, you have to have a relationship. And you have to have a relationship with the parents to let them know that we're gonna take care of your child. Your child's gonna be away from home and they're gonna come into an environment where we're gonna take care of them, we're gonna care for them, we're going to uh, make them better, not only athletes, but people. I always know that Beth will have my back no matter what. And so she's just, she's irreplaceable. I mean, she's just such an amazing recruiter. First time you meet her, you want to be best friends with her. Well, Beth and I have a very close relationship, and of course I've been with her since before my freshman year. She's the one who brought me to Tech, so um, each year we've gotten closer. Now I'm a senior, and my last year we're kind of like, Carlin and I, she jokes with us, says we're her babies because we're her first class that she recruited. So we kind of have that special bond. Having kids like Carlin and Amanda from freshmen till now, they're the kids that I've really seen develop. I mean, from when they were those little kids with the big eyes until now, I mean, now they're the, you know, they're grown women and they are excelling and I'm so proud of them to become the women they are today and the volleyball players they are today. And so to see that, you know, progression is one of the best things. She's just a really good role model to look up to and she's all about the game. She loves it, loves every second of it. And she's just a great coach. I mean, I think to me that means more than anything, more than any win-loss that we've ever had is when those kids come back and they tell you thank you for what you did, that means more to me than anything.